Hello, everyone, and a warm welcome to Creating a Better World by Design through delight, hope, and inspiration. I'm Trina from the Design Singapore Council. This special webinar brings together award recipients from the President's Design Award Singapore and the Golden Pin Design Award Taiwan. The President's Design Award is Singapore's highest accolade for design and designers, and the Golden Pin Design Award is Taiwan's most influential award. We are proud to present this webinar as the first ever collaboration between the two awards. This event is also part of the National Design Center's Emotive Design program lineup for March 2021. Before we delve into the session proper, I'd like to highlight a couple of house rules just to keep today's session running as smoothly as possible. Please be informed that this webinar will be recorded and that your microphones will be automatically set on mute throughout the session. The webinar will be conducted in English and Mandarin, and if you prefer to listen in one language, please select the globe icon at the bottom of the screen to access either language. This simultaneous translation is only available for attendees who are joining us on Zoom. We most definitely welcome questions during the Q&A segment, and you may submit them through the Zoom Q&A function. And should you encounter any technical issues, please reach out to our technical team through the Zoom chat function. Delight, hope, inspiration. What do these emotions have to do with design? We are honored to have four designers to share case studies and discuss how design can communicate serious issues in creative ways that speak to hearts and minds and how spaces can be designed to bring delight and promote harmony. I'm happy to introduce our speakers today. Joining us from Singapore, Mr. Pan Lim, co-founder and creative director of Kinetic. Also from Singapore, architect Tan Kok Hyang, founding director, Forum Architects. Joining us from Taiwan, Mr. Zhang Ziti, co-founder, Simple Info Design, and Mr. Zhang Kenghua, co-founder, Luxury Logico, also from Taiwan. Also joining us is our moderator from Singapore, Mr. Jackson Tan, co-founder and creative director at Black. Jackson is actually joining us from Taiwan, where he is currently based. Welcome, speakers. To kick off our sharing today, I would now like to invite our first speaker, Pan. Pan is a self-confessed addict to design, advertising, and communications, strongly believing that creating work without an idea is a sin. Pan received the PDA Designer of the Year in 2013. Welcome, Pan. Hi, hello. Hello. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for tuning in to this webinar. Uh, before anything, I would like to thank the organizers uh, for making this happen. And uh, I'm also very excited uh, to share this space today with our friends from Taiwan. So yeah, I'm going to start today quite quickly into uh, my presentation. So this project that I'm going to share is an exhibition that we've done uh, based on the theme of uh, sustainability. I think I'll play the video first, then later I'll go right straight into the details. Convenience. It's a big part of modern life. Unfortunately, so are its effects. Two billion tons of waste every year. Mountains of plastic, which take 1,000 years to break down. More plastic than fish in the seas by 2050. How can we get people to move away from this culture of convenience? Introducing the Not-So-Convenience Store probably the first convenience store to promote inconvenience. Reusable straws you have to wash instead of throw. Travel tumblers that add weight to your bag. Capsules that take longer to prep and clean. Compost kits that require you to live with wormy waste for months. Menstrual cups that need to be emptied and cleaned. Inconvenient zero waste alternatives like these line the shelves of the store. The drinks fridge is full of bottles and cups that can be reused while the freezer is repurposed as a recycling bin. Every product comes with a tag that spells out the price of convenience, as paid by the earth. This is reinforced by other displays. At the cashier, notes on how to live more sustainably are put in the till to inspire change. Branding materials continue in the same vein, with playful twists on customer service mottos. We enlisted sustainability champions and influencers as employees of the month, serving as examples for others. We also created Instagram stickers to help spread the message on social media. Turns out, people love being inconvenienced. 
the not-so-convenient store was featured on the news and multiple sites online. It also evolved into a mini-movement, which saw people pledging their support. So, um, so as we will all know, right, um, this topic of sustainability is a topic that I find that these days everyone talks about, but um, it can be from like small brands, fashion brands to even big corporations. Uh, but I think uh, people are sometimes getting a little bored of it. So we were thinking, how do we capture people's attention? So that was one of the reasons we wanted to think of uh, something more interesting. So, we all know that uh, single-use plastics are not good, single-use items. But actually, the core of the problem is not just about the single-use. It's actually, we are just so used to the culture of convenience. Like, everything needs to be fast. Everything needs to be, you know, I can throw away easy. So, actually, this throwing away and every, the convenience of things made it worse for the environment, actually. So, we thought of using an icon of convenience to so-called... Uh, talk about inconvenience. I think that was how we started with this project. So what better way than to introduce a convenience store that everyone knows, every, everyone can identify, but actually the, the way we would like to mislead the audience will be when they approach this store, they will be surprised that uh, while it looks exactly like a convenience store, uh, from the name design, from all the different touch points, uh, they all feel exactly like a convenience store, but it's just only upon closer inspection, you realize that there's a certain certain deception to it. Then as you even approach the... Um, you approach the... You hang on, uh, there's a slide, yeah. So as you approach even the shelves, right, you'll be very surprised to see uh, all the so-called price tags and everything. It's just as per how a shop is going to be. Uh, even the opening operation hours and whatnot, everything is designed as, uh, as a parody to a real convenience store. So um, there'll be different sections like household, plastics, uh, food, etc., etc., which is also mimicking how a convenience store is supposed to be. Then um, when you actually look at the shelves, all the items we are showing, they are all far from being convenient. They are actually all very inconvenient options like reusable straws. Uh, like uh, travel tumblers, um, like menstrual cups. Um, and we even purposefully do a section called the best sellers, but actually they, we are just highlighting different options that we could use. And I think we, you know, in all convenience stores, there's always a fridge filled with cold drinks, but ours is actually filled with uh, cups, reusable drink bottles and reusable cups. So that is to parody the look as well. We even have a freezer, but there's no ice cream there. But when you go there, that is actually our bin for throwing away e-waste. And uh, we cheekily say the line, put putting freeze on e-waste. And I go a bit into the price tag. I think the price tag is the part that I'm, I, I'm actually the most uh, happy about, actually. One of the items, because it's quite cheeky. So actually, when you look at the price tags, right, it says stainless steel bottle, price of convenience. One million plastic bottles are bought around the world. Every minute, most end up in the landfill or the ocean. But the price of inconvenience, not so convenience, is $40.62. So we, are, we actually switch out the regular price tags for tax, which lists the true price of convenience as paid by the earth. So this cheeky way of uh, messaging is throughout the store, actually. Yeah, there's a, there's, there's a, a reason why we, have a, we took this approach. Um, you can see that uh, all, all, all the stamps and everything, they, they are all done in a fun manner. Because we find that this topic is getting a bit preachy. So our approach became something that uh, we wanted, wanted it to be more lighthearted. Yeah, so that, that's really one of the, 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 the strategy that we've adopted. Even our cashier does, is not filled with notes of, or money, it's filled with notes on sustainability. 
And in, in the till, there's also change used as uh, badges. And moving forward, moving a bit into the collaterals in, in the store, we have posters. Um, so, so this is a cheeky way again, uh, instead of saying like, you know, uh, sorry for the inconvenience. No, we are not. Because actually what we're trying to say is uh, don't come back so often because the less we consume, the better. So all these cheeky headlines like uh, customers comes first, just not here. And thanks for visiting, don't come back soon. Things like that. So this really, uh, I, I mean, when, when we started creating all these posters, we were really uh, having a good laugh as well. Uh, because we felt that uh, if we can tickle people, but still make people think about it, I think it's a good thing. And uh, we also had this wall where we have employees of the month. And usually these are really to highlight, um, you know, the, the, the hardworking employees and whatnot. But we instead, we en enlisted a group of influencers who are linked with sustainability and we make them employees of the month and we feature them in store and we also feature them online. Yeah. We also have this section where we donate clean reusable bags, uh, which uh, we collaborated with uh, another partner. So you can drop off your clean tote bags and we will recycle them. And not forgetting uh, uh, Instagram page that we started uh, beginning of this year. So uh, inside this um, IG page comes with all the information you need to know. And actually in these pages, you will see us promoting some of the products from the inconvenience store, the not so convenience store. Um, but I would like to share with everybody that uh, this project is uh, totally non-profit, we don't take a single cent from these vendors. We actually just have QR codes that uh, when people come to the store, they scan, they go directly to the merchant. So we do not take a single cut at all. Yeah. So we, we, but we are happy to have partners who are able to share this same message as well. Yeah. And uh, not forgetting um, fun Instagram stickers. So um, we, we enjoy creating all these little, little cute animations. And these are the community that we have uh, brought together so far. So it's really a whole string of brands who are, they could be local producers, they could be local importers that bring in sustainable products from around the world. So um, we are still continuing building this, uh, this group of people, this community. And at the same time, I think what's a bonus is uh, ever since we launched it, uh, we've been really covered heavily by all the local press and media. And the, the, the response has been really, really very positive. Uh, the impact, I would say, is positive. And it actually gives us more drive to really pursue this further because we feel that while this topic is, you know, uh, people talk a lot about, but we are still able to bring a certain freshness to it. I think that's a good thing. So before I sign off, I would just say that beyond talking the talk, we hope to show people how to walk the walk with the store's products serving as concrete little steps towards living more sustainably. So that's what I have today. Thank you so much for spending this uh, time with me to hear me. Thank you. Thank you, Pan. As Pan shared, the not-so-convenient store is now on display at the National Design Centre until the end of March. So for our guests in Singapore, please come by this to visit this weekend. Our second speaker is Zhang Ziqi, co-founder of Simple Info Design. His company brings together individuals with different expertise to facilitate interdisciplinary collaboration and presents complex ideas in an engaging and easy to understand way. Simple Info Design received the GPDA Best Design in 2019. Zhiti will be presenting in Mandarin, so please select the globe icon if you require translation to English. Zhiti, over to you. Okay, 好,大家好,那我是Zhiti. 今天我要跟大家分享的这个专案呢我们做的东西叫做资讯设计 
也就是简单来说，我们可以把它想象成是让复杂的资讯变得比较好懂，或者是让这些比较无趣的资讯变得有趣。也因此，我们公司有非常多的部门。那到现在为止，我们公司大概是五十人左右的一间设计公司。那接下来再让我们回到我们的这个专案。这个专案呢，是由台湾的一个 NGO 的组织，它叫做 Resync， 他们所制造的委托。好，我们稍等一下我们的页面哦，再来一次。好 ，Resync 呢？他们是台湾的 NGO 组织，他们其实长期透过一些行动的教育，或者是呃，可能像是教育讲座、网络倡议等等的呢，让台湾人去正视我们的环境现状，然后重拾与环境之间的一些连接，去改变生活形态。基本上，他们就是一个倡议型的组织。那他们其实，在大概二零一三年起呢，他们就开始发起了各式各样的这种环台的大净滩。他们会带领非常多的群众到台湾的各个角落、各个呃可能很脏乱的海滩去净滩，而在这几年下来呢，他们其实号召了超过万人去清理台湾的这个海滩的超过了十万公斤的垃圾，所以可以想象哦，它是非常非常非常多的。但是呢，在这个过程当中，他们其实也看到了各式各样的问题，所以接下来我会跟大家分享三个里面比较重要的问题。第一个问题呢，就是距离感，我们可以把它想象成这是一种难以亲近的状态。呃，首先我们要去思考的事情是，环保它并不是一个很立即的问题。那同时呢，要去这个净滩，因为我们台湾虽然是一个海岛国家，但是我们大家居住的地方离海岸是相对非常遥远的，所以呢，这边会有一些移动上面的困难度。而在这个时间呢、啊、空间还有议题的这种三重的距离感的交错之下呢，你就会发现。近滩这件事情跟大家的连接度其实变得越来越低，而再来我们来看第二个问题，第二个问题呢就是非常沉重的这种议题的讨论。除了我们讲到这种物理上面这个垃圾其实非常沉重，可以想到我刚刚讲的说是每年的十万公斤的垃圾，那谈论这个社会议题，包含像是环保。包含像是可能各式各样的倡议，其实它对于这个使用者受众来说，他们的心理负担也是非常大的。所以久而久之呢，就造成了这个大众不太愿意去谈论它，那进而呢，会让我们对于这些事情的认知也开始慢慢的下降。那第三个是所谓的无力的这种比较疲惫的感觉。我们来看一看，呃，其实海洋废弃物问题它是非常难以根绝的。今天我们去这个海滩净滩，可是你可能过了一个月，你过了两个月回来之后，它又会变得一模一样。所以这一次又一次的净滩呢，其实是会让大家觉得很了无新意，然后让参与者的这些留存度下降的。所以面对了这三个问题呢，我们就来讨论说，到底应该要怎么样去解决它。也因此，他们在跟我们沟通的时候，我们产生了我们接下来要讨论到的这几个的专案策略。那接下来就让我们来看一看我们的专案到底长什么样子。首先的第一个策略呢，就是亲近感。在海废图鉴这个网站里面呢，大家可以看到它是非常亲民的样子，而且把过去我们觉得可能很沉重、很丑陋的这一些东西呢，都变成了一个很可爱的样子。这边我想象的东西是，不要想着让人去海边捡拾垃圾，而是呢，把这些垃圾、把海废直接带到荧幕前给大家。那 r e s i n g 他们就在这样一次又一次的进谈当中呢，与民众他们共同去收集，然后挑选出了101个有趣的、带有故事的这些海洋废弃物，并且经过清洗啊、拍照，然后再用我们的设计搭配一些丰富的色彩之后，就让大众开始感到好奇，并且主动的想要去了解这一个又一个海废背后的故事。而第二个呢，就是轻松，人们都喜欢谈论轻松的议题，所以相对于这些沉重的社会议题，我们把它变得更加的有趣。我们把每一个海贝都拍摄了三百六十度的照片，我们这都是一张一张亲手拍的，所以呢，这个照片它是五度一个角，然后每一个物品有七十二张照片。那当你在下滑这个。网页的时候呢，其实你就会看到这个海贝像是一个美术馆里面的艺术品一样，它会搭配一个三百六十度旋转的互动动态，然后不断的旋转，让人不自觉的开始上滑跟下滑玩了起来。同时呢，我们也搭配一些好玩的故事，还有一些知识性的解说，让人一个点一个，然后不断的看下去。而最后呢，一个策略其实就轻松之外，我们还要好玩，所以它不只是一个单纯的陈列，我们规划了一些非常有趣的这种问题测验，其实让每个人呢都可以去认识更多你原本没有兴趣想要点开的那些海贝。而这些策略其实就翻转了我们原本可能像是乏味啊、沉重、难以接近的这些社会的议题。
，它让这个海废的图鉴呢，它一举变成了一个有点像是宝可梦一般的这种童趣的存在，然后引发了大家的玩乐之心。所以大家无聊的话呢，你也可以上去看看。而我们刚刚讲到这些海洋废弃的东西呢，我觉得它更有趣的事情是在我们现在的社群环境之下，其实一个网站它不只是单一的一个内容而已，它更像是一个工具。所以这些工具呢，就把它放到网络上面之后，有非常多的老师，非常多的同朋友呢，他们开始分享这些网站。所以这个网站就像是一个又一个的工具一样，它透过大家的嘴巴、大家的分享，传递了出去，让更多人知道这件事情。而最后呢，也回到 Resing 来，他们可能透过捐款，他们可能呃开始参与他们的净滩。然后甚至是开始分享自己跟海贝相关的故事。所以这就是这整个专案我们最想要达成的事情。这个整个海贝图鉴，它是一个永久而好取得的工具。透过各式各样的人，大家一起来协助，把资讯变得有趣，变得好玩。所以它不只是一个设计品，更是一个打开领域的钥匙。那以上呢，就是我们这一次很简单的分享。那希望大家觉得有兴趣的话呢，都可以点击到这个网站去网上看，然后一起认识一下海贝，还有我们现在所身处的环境。那以上就是我的分享，谢谢大家。Thank you， 志奇。Our third speaker is architect Tan Kok Hyang, founding director of Forum Architects Singapore. His firm has won more than 55 local and international awards in the past 25 years. Among them, the Chicago Athenaeum International Architecture Award for the Yale and U.S. College in Singapore, and the URA Architectural Heritage Award for Restoration for the Jurong Town Hall project. He received the PDA Design of the Year in 2014. Kok Hyang, the screen is yours. Thank you, Trina. Uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, I'd like to thank the organizers from Singapore and Taiwan for putting 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 together this webinar. I hope I'll be able to share something of value with you today. Um, okay, so you see on your screen um, the exterior of the Ashafa Mosque, which is what I'll be talking about today. Uh, my practice, Forum Architects, had won this project uh, in a competition in two in two, about two thousand and two two thousand and one. Uh, the project was completed in 2004. Uh, at that time, I was particularly interested in the topic of Islamic architecture because that had been my final year thesis at the university. Uh, it will be more than 13 years after I finish my my course before I would be able to get a chance to put my thoughts into concrete.、Um, this design was done in the wake of 9/11. Uh, some of you are probably too young to know the significance of 9/11.、Uh, it was the bombing of the twin towers of the World Trade Center in New York、uh, by the Muslim extremists、uh, that I think left more than two thousand, three thousand people dead. That incident resulted in a in a very deep resentment to Middle Eastern communities. My mosque design tried to remove Middle Eastern references like domes and Moorish arches. Or traditional minarets in the design of of of,、uh, of mosques,、uh, we we started thinking about what a, a modern mosque would be like. The key was not to just design something that is completely modern. It had to be had had emotional links back to what people are familiar with. So we looked at elements that people are familiar with.、Um, let me just click on this slide. Okay, so what you see here is the. It's a sort of a, a, a part of an arch.、Um, the the architectural expression of Islam is actually very deeply rooted in the architecture of the Middle East, as as that's where the religion evolved. Hence, arches and domes used to were used to span large spaces, as well as become very significant、uh, emblems of, of of important buildings.、Uh, but actually, this had more to do with、um, with the conquest and the history of that land. Than the religion itself, so that made these elements actually open to interpretation.、Uh, we did we did an arch. We we referenced the arch, but mainly because we needed to have the load, the structural load,、uh, transferred to the ground in as few points as possible. In other words, it, we we wanted a column free, column free, a pillar free、uh, space because of the large number that will congregate in these spaces、uh, for prayer. Uh, the arches that I designed were three-dimensional. You can see from the from the from the screen that they are not just、uh, flat. The sides of the arches are not flat, but they are in fact tapering up towards the 
towards towards the, the 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 top. The idea for that was that it would then lead the eye um, towards the mirab, which I will show you going forward. So you see these these arches and how they were actually three dimensional arches that actually ended up with only eight points at, on the ground level because it was carrying load, transferring load from the three stories above down to the ground. Uh, you see these arches, uh, they're actually cast in concrete, raw concrete, uh, and they're completely three-dimensional. They sort of interact with each other. They're not flat at all. Um, yeah, and, the, and the, the, main, the main aim was to use them for transfer of load. Um, and then as you come up from the abusion, which is in the basement of this building, abusion is where they, 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 the, the Muslims cleanse themselves before prayer. And they walk up a series of steps and, and then they will be drawn by the, by, the, by the rising arches to what is in front of them, which is what we call a mirab wall. This wall in, in Islamic worship is, is very important because it faces Mecca. As you face this wall, you will know that you're actually facing Mecca, which is the holy city. Uh, so this wall we designed very unusually to be canted. Uh, it's, it's stunted towards the worshippers. And this um, is actually a wash with, uh, with lights, with, uh, with, uh, with, with natural light. Uh, the idea of this is the canting is to sort of put men, sort of, you know, humble men and, and, and put him in this, uh, in this earthly place in relation to the heaven. So, you know, you know, that there's something beyond, beyond earth. Uh, on this wall, on this wall, uh, I also carve the 99 names of Allah. Uh, and you can see on the next slide, uh, maybe not so well. Yes, in the diagram on the left, you can see that um, I'm pointing to a sort of a, a, a calligraphic um, square, as you see there. And actually, the calligraphy was actually done by, we invited the, the imam of uh, the, the, great, the great mosque of Xi'an to come to actually uh, uh, do the calligraphy. And then, then this was laser printed and so on, and actually um, embossed onto the marble finish. So as you face this wall, as worshippers face this wall, uh, they will also see on the right hand side uh, uh, a mimba. Mimba is where the where the um, the imam would be sit would be at the pulpit and would be con uh, do doing his uh, doing his preaching and his uh, and and his leading of the congregation. Um, the very next important thing is the, is the arabesque, the concept of the arabesque. This is another element that we try to bring in because it is actually very universal, probably more universal than the, the arches and the domes that you see in most mosques. In almost, if you go to the great mosques in China, uh, many mosques in, in China um, or Southeast Asian countries, you may not see the mosque, you may not see the arches or the domes, but you will certainly see some version of the arabesque. Why is this important? It's important because it was... Um, develop the whole concept of the arabesque, actually uh, overlapping geometries. And the idea of job jump is that it actually is meaning to replicate the concept of the Quran. So there should be, there's no beginning as, it, as in the Quran, there's no beginning and there's no end. Apparently you can read the Quran from any point and finish at the same point and it will still make sense. So it is, and, and the patterns are, are infinite. You can keep multiplying as, as is the Quran, the stories of the Quran and the lessons of the Quran and is multi-centered and so on and so forth. And in, above all, it's all inspiring. So you see very, very uh, elaborate uh, 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 patterns that, that evolve from this concept of the arabesque. So we use the arabesque uh, because it's very adaptable. You can adapt to the Thai patterns, Chinese patterns, Vietnamese pattern to, uh, to embellish most of the spaces in this, um, in this mosque. Another element is the, is the minaret. Uh, minaret is a very important um, uh, feature in a lot of mosques because in traditional, in, in the olden days, you, you would have somebody at the top of these minarets, which are usually very high and tall. And sometimes the mosque would have four of these and they would actually be, be a call to prayer to, to, to different directions of, of in, 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 the, in the community. Of course, now that's not very relevant. They have now become just a symbol. In, in my mosque, I've just used one minaret and this is very much a North, North African sort of model. 
Um, and the way that we've designed it is that it's actually using the crescent shape. So you see the diagram on the left, the profile, the plan of the arabesque is actually the crescent, crescent shape. This is a very important symbol for, 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 for Muslims, the crescent and the star. And then they're actually made of metal pieces, which are exactly the same width. And then they telescope upwards and thereby creating sort of gaps in between. But this is an important structural concept as well because it's about 33, 30 meters high. So it allows lateral load to, to, to sort of pass through, um, through the structure. Okay, so did you see there the, the last slide? Uh, you see the screens there forming some sort of pattern as well. Uh, but then this time the pattern is actually the void space rather than the, the solid space. Yes, that's the end of my slide. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gokyang. Our final speaker is Zhang Genghua, co-founder of Luxury Logi Co. Luxury Logi Co was started by four young creatives born in the 1980s, and they specialize in visual art, machinery installation, new media, and audio. Together, the group has created spectacular installations that integrate unconventional materials. They received the GPDA Best Design in 2019. Genghua, over to you. Hong Zoom的作品里面呢,基本上可能会有一些机械装置,灯光装置,然后可能呼应一些新媒体的一些方式。那当然我们也有一些比较大型的计划,然后公共艺术类型的作品,在不同的场域不断的发生。那现在看到的这
你可能我希望找你们团队来帮我们设计一个花卉博览会的一个打卡亮点。老实说，我一听到“打卡亮点”四个字的时候，在听到这是要跟政府合作，我就觉得非常没有兴趣。可是他一直在告诉我们说，我们现在一直在努力很多的事情，要把策展导入、组织建立跟结构性改变。那当时我们拒绝他两次，你知道他们从预算啊三百万到五百万，可是你知道当他打说到“打卡亮点”这四个字的时候呢，其实我想到的事情。是 Hello Kitty， 我就想说，如果你只是要创造一个打卡亮点，而不是去注重博览会高度这件事情的话，那我们大可不必做。我们是不是只要去买这个 IP 的授权，来变成你们所谓的打卡亮点就好了？那当然，我们经过了一番讨论，我们就跟汉中讲到这件事情。如果我们回想到一百多年前，在世界博览会的巴黎现场呢，我们会知道，其实这个巴黎铁塔是为了。这个重要的博览会所创造出来，当时一定有非常多的反对的声量。可是，当我们去分析这个博览会的平台，它是一个非常重要的贸易平台，它也是国家实力展现的平台，它也是跟国与国不间接战争的一个平台。再来，是在这个文化、科技跟产业最好的一个展现平台。当我们去思考这件事情的时候呢，我们就跟他说：“那我们先不要去思考所谓的打卡亮点这件事情，而是我们必须先把博览会高度先拉出来。”所以，当我们在跟他讨论博览会高度的时候，这个预算呢，他就说：“那你先去想想，我们到底能做什么？”结果呢，这样子一路一路的延伸，这件作品从三百万、五百万、一千万，一直到最后变成七千两百万的一个架构。那我们来看一下这件作品到最后的时候，其实就是像这样子的一个状态。在这个发展的过程中呢，我们跟一个生物的老师聊到一件事情，他告诉我们说。开花是植物生长过程中细胞分裂最反复的状态。我觉得这句话它提醒了一个我们非常重要的一件事情，是说，如果我们收到了一个题目，然后我们只去思考造型的问题的时候，我们会去忽略掉它原本可能有一些精神性或是比较内在的一些养分或是可呈现的状态。所以我们就开始去分析，在植物，然后博览会、城市的特性。跟我们熟悉科技艺术，跟知道我们要去如何分析人文这件事情，然后再来，我们如何透过跟在地的连接，产生更多的社会扩散，是我们在这件作品里面不只是在处理设计或是艺术之外的一些事情。所以在这个过程里面呢，你看到这张图是，呃，我刚才提到，其实我们呃这个艺术团队只有四个人，然后其中有一位耿豪呢是我的双胞胎哥哥。那这张图其实也是让我最难过的地方，是因为在这个花博的制作的时时间呢，呃，我哥因为癌症的关系他过世，所以这张草图也是他留下来最后的一张草图。那这件这件作品也是他人生当中最后的一件作品。那当我们有一个初步的想法的时候呢，他把这张草图画下来，那我们就很快速的呢。去做了一个模型，你看到左手边这个部分呢，其实就是一个运动的模型。我们先确定，我们现在有一个初步的思考，我们是不是可以真的完成这件事情？然后我们开始做大量的 3D 的建模。那在这个过程里面呢，刚才那个设计长开了一个玩笑，他跟我说：“耿华，你跟台湾的政府合作，成功就会被收割，失败就会被切割。”我听到这件事情的时候，就是既好哭又好笑，就觉得。为什么我们在做这件事情？我们不能用一种共创的角度去让我们一件作品发生。那你知道，在我们这件作品的结构里面呢，其实有非常多重要的共创企业。因为一开始我们去思考到这件作品的时候，其实我们根本没有这么多的预算去做这件事情。可是我们跟跟设计长在讨论这件作品的时候，我们先分析到了台中的这个环境，台湾的台中的这个环境，这个社会的结构里面，其实有非常多的科技产业、营造业。那这些产业呢，他们其实都有非常强烈的能量。那那时候呢，我们就把这件作品做了强大的分，做做了非常缜密的分析之后呢，让他们的每一个能力的呃范围，可以变成这件作品的一部分。这是我们让这件作品可以成为有共创能量的可能性。那现在你看到这位。这位呃女士，右边的这位女士呢，其实是让我非常感动的。她是其中的一个科技公司的总经理。她在重要的会议里面，因为我们提出了这个想法之后，她告诉所有的人说，她要帮年轻人完成梦梦想。可是我觉得帮年轻人完成梦想这件事情，有一个非常重要的事情，是我们必须要有非常务实的执行能力。但是在这个之外，我们又可以提出有一个非常高的一个主张跟目标。我想这些长辈他才能够协助我们一起来完成这件事情。另外一个他说的一件事情是，你们如果不够疯，我也不跟你们玩
意思是说，其实当他们产业已经大到一种程度的时候，如果我们没有办法提出比他们更高，或是困难度更难，或是让他们可以有所突破，或是让他们的工程师、设计师可以有一些学习的榜样的时候呢，我觉得他们其实也不会想要让这个计划继续发生。所以这件事情就变成是这个计划其实有不同的价值，而不是只有在处理这些作品纯粹视觉上设计的一个问题。那当然，在跟政府合作的过程里面呢，因为我们好不容易得到非常多的经费，其实很多人都说哇，好棒，你们怎么会有这么多的预算可以做一件这么大型的作品？那在这种状态底下，我们反而会去回想一件事情，就是当一位艺术家，其实有时候没有经费非常痛苦，可是经费太多的时候也非常可怕。而我们面对到公单位的时候，我们到底是厂商还是艺术家的一个定位？那当我们的作品其实有一个声光机神的一个分析，基本上呢就是声音、光线、机械跟控制。那我们从一段简短的作品来看一下这件作品的呈现。那这件作品其实有非常复杂的一个设计，然后它也要用到多点控制，然后来呈现作品。所以我也想透过这个前面的一些组装的过程，然后到这件作品逐步完成的一个状态，可以让大家可以看到这件作品不同的一个面貌。好，那像呃，因为时间也差不多，想先到这边，谢谢。谢谢耿华 ，Thank you speakers for sharing on your inspiring and delightful projects. I'll now hand the time over to our moderator, Jackson Tan, co-founder and creative director of Black for the discussion. Welcome, Jackson, and let's bring back our four speakers for the discussion. Thanks, Trina. Hello, everyone. Okay, um, I'm going to start the session today uh, by asking all the speakers uh, this first question. So, why is it important to engage emotions through design? Uh, maybe we can start with Pan. Okay. So, um, thanks for the question, Jackson. Um, I guess uh, for me, my my methods have always been. Uh, based on how I feel personally when I do my work. Mm -hmm. So if let's say, for example, if I don't like people to be rude to me, I wouldn't want to be rude to others. So if let's say I want a design to work for others, it has to work on myself. First. So for for instance, when I look like a look at a piece of work, what touches me uh, in a more humane form, in a way that I can feel connected. Uh, then I will want my work to do the same as well. So when I was watching the the presentation from my colleagues today on on this uh, webinar, uh, at at many points it touches me as well. So for me, I think these are the qualities that uh, are important in any piece of work. That is the connection because we are human in this way. So I I think I'll keep it brief because I think everybody also have something to share about this emotional right. part about projects. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, man. How about Kok Yang? What do you think? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, when I design, I don't really uh, think about emotions. Uh, but what I try to do is I try to seek beauty. For me, that's, that's uh, very, very underrated in our, in our world. Uh, we do a lot of government projects and it's very rare. Person or client tell us, you know, it has to be beautiful. Uh, and yet things, I think architecture or anything has to be beautiful. And I think beauty, beauty is one of the very, very few things left that actually, uh, I think, elicit positive response. 
uh, if you think about it, every day we go to life, we are having many negative thoughts. We are worrying, we are all kinds of things. So if you see something of beauty, it brings about, you know, happy thoughts, positive thoughts. So that's, that's what I try to do all the time. And I think if you do that well, then I think you'll be able to elicit positive uh, emotions. Hmm. Uh, 子琪, 你认为呢, 这个在设计过程当中啊, 我们要怎么包含这个情感设计? 你觉得为什么它是那么重要的一个元素? 我觉得可以从资讯设计的角度来讲, 就是在资讯设计里面呢, 我们有一个叫做知识管理的金字塔, 最底层呢, 叫做资料, 它是一个单纯的事实, 然后当它经过一些有意义的解读之后, 会变成资讯, 资讯经过内化变知识,知识透过行动变智慧, 然后反复不断发生之后会形成一个价值观所以资讯设计它最关键的目的还是怎么样让大家从接收资讯到形成一个行动那这时我们就可以知道说创造一个行动它往往不是来自于一些理性的判断而是来自于一时的一些激情所以
we, we got feedback and um, people do visit and they leave messages behind and say that, you know, thanks for doing this. And, and of course, we can do it better. Uh, I think we have not reached the point where we really can say that everything is zero waste because I've also met up with uh, more, um, I think, uh, people who are really uh, more, they deep dive into what eco, eco and sustainability is all about and they talk about, but why is there a packaging? When you have packaging, then it's not green anymore, this product. I, I do not have a solution for that because I think whoever who puts out the product needs to have a brand as well. And I so far, we have not solved the problem of how to put a brand on a product without having some sort of a packaging, right? So, and the packaging at most times is also to protect the product. So, so and so forth. So, we, we, are, we are not there yet in terms of solving everything, but I feel that uh, every small step how small it is, is still a progress. So things like that, yeah. I think that's all I have. Zixi, what do you think? Because your issue is very deep, and very deep. You said it's going to be far away. What do you think your challenge is? What do you think you can achieve? 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 I think it's fine in the design, but the most difficult part is how to keep the audience together with you. 因为当一个议题越深的时候，我们很容易会因为知道更多，所以呢，你就会觉得，哎，这些不是都是尝试吗？啊，你怎么会，你都不了解这些东西？然后从这一点的质疑开始，你其实就跟群众不是站在一起了。那当你不是跟他站在一起的时候，你是没有办法去触动他们的心的。所以我觉得，怎么样去时刻的保持跟群众的连接，反而很重要。那我自己的方式，其实就是透过非常大量的真实的相处。这边你就不能够透过看资料，或者是透过埋在家里面做设计，更多的是我们要走入到学校，走入到讲座现场，走入到静态的现场，就让他们知道说，哦，原来你们在烦恼的东西是什么，什么样子的东西是你们真实遇到的这些痛点，或者是你们在日常生活当中能够拿来沟通的工具，保持这个对话，其实对。很多的设计师来讲，我觉得反而是难的，因为他真的是比较辛苦。可是我觉得他也是最简单的路，所以我鼓励的是真实的参与行动，你就比较容易做出可以去刺激别人情感的地方。嗯，是 ，OK， 呃、uh, ，OK， so Pan， why why do you think that people resonated so strongly with with the project？ You know， I mean， we we've seen like you know in the videos there's a lot of comments and all review， the review，、sure. why is it so？ Um。Frankly, uh, we have not done a proper research. This I have to come clean. So based on the feedback, I guess uh, I think freshness is one thing, lah. So I mean, for 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 because for for us, while we work on design and whatnot, actually at Kinetic, we are a three sixty agency where we work on advertising as well. So I think um, understanding that freshness and a strong single minded idea is as important as uh execution. Uh, we actually just make sure that the message that we are going out, that we are crafted, be it an exhibition or is it a poster or whatnot, is sharp in thinking, uh, is clear in the message, is fresh to the viewers, and executed well. So I think this will end up、uh, a result where people will resonate with. So I think the the feeling of approaching so far, I know for a fact that when people approach the store, they really think that it's a convenience store. Until they walk in, then they oh my god, this is weird. Then so and so forth. So that for that because I I was、uh, at the store for for a while and just looking at reactions and I understand that part、uh, that it works. So I think that that's largely why because when there's intrigue, people will think about it. Then they'll tell their friends, right? Hey, you know over this place, there's over the design center, there's this new exhibit that's out there that is、um, interesting. It looks like a Seven Eleven store for for that matter. And when you walk in, it's not. So things like that. So I think probably that's why, and not forgetting that the, this topic is actually、um, important topic that actually the younger generations are a lot more passionate about as well. So I think we are combining these a few things together:、uh, execution plus a topic that's hotly discussed. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess the theme is、uh, is is something that is、uh, in the hearts of the of the audience, but at the same time you presented it in a very unexpected way, lah. You know. So is it? Eh, suddenly you got the inconvenience store, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I think so. Is something like that, yeah. Hmm. That Zixi, 呢？你你认为为什么那个观众对你们的这个 project 会有如此的那个强烈的回应？嗯
。OK， 呃，我认为要引起这种共鸣啊，或者是讨论，它的前提很关键是你要跟这个东西的相处时间够久。那相处包含上是物理上面我们直接的接触，以及心理上面，就是你花了很多的时间去想它。那我觉得这边有一个心理学的呃可以玩的点，就是认知失调这件事情。我们在里面创造了很多大量的对比，那这个对比会让大家在一开始想象的时候产生一个违和感，例如说一个可爱的 Hello Kitty， 但是呢，它竟然是一个海洋的废弃物，而且它可能对海洋造成了一个巨大的伤害。那这件事情的对比，可爱的东西对上巨大的伤害。大家就会觉得说，啊，怎么可能会这个样子？那他就不断的在想的时候，这个想的过程，他就会导入很多更多自己的人生经验跟人生的故事。所以最后呢，这个设计就成了一个工具，让他把自己更多的故事说了出来。所以我们觉得最长的是用这样的方式，一个日常随处可得，但是产生一个你完全想不到的状况。嗯嗯 ，Yeah， 这是非常有趣的一个 presentation。那呃、uh, ，OK， next I'm gonna just、uh, ask both、uh, speakers, but first I think with Pan. So you know we have looked at both projects and they、uh, they have some kind of similarity in the themes, but quite different in terms of the presentations. You know, so I want to ask this question. So what if the projects were to be re represented in the other country? Just imagine if we were to present、um, Zhiqi's project in Singapore and、uh, Pan's project in Taiwan. Okay, so for Pan. So if we look at the guidebook, you know, of the marine debris, you know,、uh, would you think that you have the same response in Singapore? And what would you think you would tweak, you know, to suit the Singapore context? Okay. Um. Uh. Sorry. I'm. I know that we are running short of time. Um. I will keep my answer really brief. Uh. Actually, I do think that um, Zhiqi's project is very universal. So, uh, I would think that it will work well in Singapore. Moreover, we are in, we are an island. We are surrounded by water, and we have、uh, if you search, we have quite a number of beach cleanup groups in Singapore, which will which largely they are passionate about cleaning up our 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 beach, and to collect all this debris. I don't think it will be something that、uh, our audience here will not resonate with. And moreover, it's presented in such a wonderful, engaging way. Uh, I I don't see why it will not happen here. It will be very popular here as well. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. 那自己呢？你你觉得呢？如果那个不便利的商店呢，在台湾，就是而且我知道台湾有非非常多的那个非常多便利商店，非常多。但是一个很很有趣的议题。<笑>那你觉得我们会得到什么什么样的那个反应呢？从那个观众，然后你也觉得觉得 OK 变的话，你会改变什么地方呢？来适合台湾这个文化，我觉得一定是一定是很容易。其实我刚刚一直在听的时候，我就想说啊，这个东西如果我去申请个概念的转换，然后在台湾整个视觉重新做一遍，一定也会中。那我自己会做的改变就是，我想要让它真实发生在一些便利商店上面，就是可能直接跟，嗯、例如说像 Seven Eleven， 直接跟像是全家便利商店，我们直接合作。嗯然后去结合他们实际在面对这些问题时做的一些举措，例如说他们有在减少这个呃塑胶的使用，他们有在帮忙回收，然后把这个这个店直接发生在真实的便利商店上，然后把车展转到过这个地方，同时呢，他们又带出他们自己的企业行动。那我相信这个东西就会很好玩，而且它是可以像快闪店一样发生在整个台湾的各个角落，那它产生影响力就很巨大。嗯，好，谢谢。Okay, next we're gonna move on to Gok Yang and、uh, Gong Hua. Okay, so、uh, first I'll start with Gok Yang. So you know both your projects, you know, use such a you know hard and large scale mediums, you know, be it machines or buildings, to engage with the audience. So what kind of challenge did you you know encounter making the designs to interact with the audience? So let's start with Gok Yang. Uh, okay. So you know, I I, I don't actually focus on the materials. The materials themselves are there to serve a purpose, which is to create space.、Mm -hmm. So it is a space that I'm interested in because it, it is a space that people people function in,、uh, people walk in, people use. It's you know, if it's a nice material, they notice it. There's some impact on the space. That's fine. But、uh, first and foremost, always the space, because space, if done properly, is poetry, and that is the highest level of uh, of. Uh, Uh, emotion that you can elicit from、uh, from from a user.、Mm. So、um, yeah, that's okay. 那耿华呢？你觉得说，因为你们用了很那种 you know, 很巨大的那些呃，而且很很坚硬的那些材料啊，然后机械啊
呃空间设计啊，去跟那个观众去互动。那你觉得说，在那个设计当中，你觉得是最困难的地方挑战是在哪里？我吗？对，耿华。呃，我想对我们来说，应该不会是困难的问题，应该是在这个过程里面，我们会去寻找一种对话的关系。那，因为其实在，在在一件作品的结构上面，它当它要形成一个这么大的量体的时候，那个那个材料上面的选用，它可能是必然的。但是，当这件作品它要进入到，比如说互动模式的一种思考的时候，那其实，比如说刚刚你看到外形，它像是一朵圆形的红色的巨型的花，那这朵花基本上它可以被控制。可是有人就会问说，那请你这朵红色的花是火球花、绣球花？或是什么花？其实，在视觉想象上面来说，你可以用任何你你的想象套在这边。有人会觉得它像草莓，有人会觉得它像是一颗很大的钻石，因为当它红色的布收掉的时候，它是一颗红色的钻石。可是我们自己在思考这件作品的时候，刚才一开始有提到一个很重要的点是，植物是生长过，植物是哎开花是植物生长过程中细胞分裂最繁复的状态。这这一句话，它让我们去思考到是。我们是不是可以赋予某一种植物的生命过程，或是说它一种特性？所以在这件作品里面的互动，我们用含羞草来思考。当我们知道有一些植物，我们去触碰到它的时候，它可能会缩起来；那或是说向日葵，它是会跟着太阳会走的。所以当我们用像含羞草模式或是向日葵模式去思考的时候，我们就可以去把呃太阳跟这件作品的一个 GPS 坐标输入进去之后。它就会像是一朵花，然后跟着太阳在做开合的一个动作，所以它其实跟自然就可以做一种连接，它跟人也可以连接。那另外一种，其实我们可以去处理的事情是一种体感的状态，比如说我们在这件作品里面装了一个风力呃风速计，风速计本身它可以提供方向跟能量的一个数据。那我们可以把这两个数据呢转换到这件作品里面的时候，其实它不管是在创造视觉。或是他的声音，或是互动的状态，他都可以让，比如说人感受到这个自然的状态，跟这件作品，嗯，好像跟大地之间连接的一种状态连接在一起。那就是我们在这个作品里面有思考到的一部分。嗯，谢谢。OK， 高强，呃，这时候我 ask you， why do you think people resonated so strongly with your project？ 呃，三 ，for me to answer？ Yes。Okay, sorry. Uh, why? Uh, you know, I was a bit surprised when it was completed. Uh, there were many visitors, uh, and many of the visitors were not Muslims. So obviously, it wasn't the it wasn't about the religion or or the expression of the religion that interested people. Uh, I think end of the day, if as as I go back to what I said in the beginning, if you create beauty, if you create spaces that are very ethereal, that are very lofty, um, in a way spiritual, so they transcend all the religions. And、uh, to me, I I I I think I hope that is what、uh, attracted people to the project. Hmm.、Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Gen Hua. That you 认为为什么民众会 you know 为你的这个案子如此的那个强烈的共鸣？呃，在我们的作品里面，我觉得有一个非常重要。我们一开始就在分析的事情，因为当时我们这件作品它是在一个七千平方公尺的基地里面，所以我们知道我们一定要去创造一个相对应的一个量体。才能够让这件作品在这个空间中不会被吃掉，所以这件作品的维度已经是非常重要的一件事情。那再来是我们决定了用机械装置跟多点控制来创造这件这些机械花的时候，呃，也会这个这个设定基本上已经会让很多人觉得不可思议，因为它是一个、呃、类似森林的一个自然环境，所以它的湿它的湿度。然后，或是说它的风力条件、它的环境，其实都是不适合这种机械装置长时间在外面。长长时间运作的一种状态，所以当这样子的作品出现在一个森林园区里面的时候，大家就会有一种一种很强烈的反馈回来，想说怎么会在这边有这样？所以它是一种惊，我觉得一开始会是惊讶、惊艳的一个过程。那再来就是，呃，在当地其实我们也跟很多的在地企业合作，我觉得这个是一个非常重要的点，因为一开始我曾经跟台中的朋友联络过，我问他说。当台湾的政府要办台中的花博的时候，你认为这跟你的关系是什么？这位老师哦，他直接跟我说，这跟我一点关系都没有，因为他觉得其实我们好像并没有真的非常认真在处理所谓的博览会这件事情。可是当我们
决定要做这样的作品的时候，我们开始跟企业连接，企业提供了非常多的支持跟资源。然后，当他们觉得这件作品好像达到某种高度的时候，他们也开始去扩散，他们会去宣传说我们曾经参与过这样的作品，所以他们。让更多的人一起到参与来这个去看这个成果。那我觉得其实是从从不同的面向，然后拉到了非常多的人，然后从不同的面向去了解这件作品，我觉得很重要的共鸣点。谢谢。OK， 嗯、um, ，We're going to move on to um the Q&A with the audience. OK， so I think we have、uh, received、uh, some questions from the audience and、uh, some are specific to the designers. Okay, I'm gonna just、uh, start with the first question,、uh, and that's for Pan. Okay, okay, and it, it says here, "Hi Pan, thanks for sharing、uh, on the not so convenience、uh, store. Love the thought and the dedication put into both the first and second edition of it. I would like to ask, with、uh, environmental concerns growing,、um, what else can we do sustainably as designers to not contribute further to more waste while still being in the industry?" Uh, that has to create、uh, environmental graphics, print, and packaging from brand collaterals to evoke emotions to speak to the audience. Yeah, Pan. Uh, thank you. Uh, for this tough question. <laughs> um, to be honest, uh, I I I don't want to smoke my way around, but I do have to admit that um,、uh, frankly, as uh designers and. Especially graphic designers, we print stuff and all that, and of course, with the rise of the concern of sustainable issues,、uh, there's not a single day that I do think about that as well.、Mm -hmm. So there are a few、uh, things that I do, but they might not be a huge step to reduce that much waste.、Uh, I will try to use more sustainable paper,、uh, at least with FSC and DOS, or if not,、um, from the paper merchant, they tell me that this is from.、Uh, More responsible source.、Uh, that's one way. The other way will be, let's say, when I'm exec executing projects for my client. I mean, end of the day, I do work for my clients, and my design practice is because the jobs are given by my clients, and I'm able to practice using their project briefs, and in the end, there's outcome. Yeah. Um. So sometimes I will ask them. Uh. Maybe this one should be a digital piece more than a printed piece. Or do we need this flyer? If we do not need this flyer, can this exist as one of the Instagram posts or whatnot? So、mm -hmm. we will find alternatives to printing. So that is actually the little ways that we are working. But there's one thing I want to highlight.、Mm -hmm. um, if we can keep the world green, and it's such an easy way to do it, then actually there won't be so much discourse. There won't be so. This issue is something that、um, takes everyone to actually、uh, come together and do it. And a lot of things are legacy things where, like for years, we have been growing up in our in 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 our society, and we we were not probably too、um, exposed to this issue.、Uh, mm -hmm. And and time has passed, and it has become a habit. And you know, it's hard to kick a habit. And I think,、uh, but I do feel that. Um, while how hard it is, it's still never too late to start. So I think we are all starting,、uh, but it's just an issue about、uh, how well we do it. But I, I do not really have a solution about cutting down on design, and that's why we don't do any more design anymore. I mean, one while I can say it, then do more digital design, but then I still think that there are needs for, let's say, producing a a very important book, you、yes. know, to be put in a library. And I cannot say oh because we should cut down on the usage of paper then let's not print any more things. I'm not going there also, but、mm -hmm. I I do understand the question and I'm also stuck in the middle. Yeah, I guess it's、uh, striking the balance. Yeah, trying to find yeah. the balance. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're gonna move to the next question. Okay. Uh, this question is asking yourself. Uh, that this uh audience asked. Uh, some of the self sharing. That that you this project is very innovative. That you this project is very innovative. That you this project is very innovative. That you this project is 然后他想要就是请问说，你为何呃为何会选这一百零一件的废物那个海废？然后你怎么去决定说要选一百零一件？然后怎么去选 ？OK， 呃，一百零一件的选择其实
。当然，一零一这对台湾是一个比较特别的数字，因为我们台湾有一个这一零一的大楼，所以我们那时候就想说，要让它很多的话，看起来这个百科全书应该要超过一百，所以我们就选了一个一零一件这样子。那怎么选择？其实这个故事蛮有趣的，因为这些东西呢，都是在当下进摊的时候发生的。进摊的时候呢，有一个设计师，他会在里面当这个监管的人员，他就是有点像是呃选品总监。然后这个选品总监下面呢，还会有各个小队的队长。然后他们在每一个这个进摊的过程当中呢，这个先由队长学得说，嗯，这个东西好像不错。他们可能捞了二三十件乐色之后，学得一个这个不错，然后这个呢才会被拿到这个上面来给这个选品的总监。那他们选择的标准，第一个是他要有它的趣味性。第二个是它的颜色要够有趣，因为我们是要做有趣的呈现，然后再来是跟日常生活中的连接是不是够强烈。那兼具这三件事情的话，才可以过到就是最上面的总监，然后被留下来。那当然最后的时候也是等我们全部清洗完成之后，才会知道它的状况以及它的嗯，算是物品的形状的多样性也会被考量在里面。然后最后我们才去撰写它，还包含像不同材质啊等等的教育上面的意义。嗯，了解。Okay. Um, next question is for Kok Hyang. Okay. So Kok Hyang, uh, was the clients brief to to approach the mosque, uh, in a more contemporary, um, you know, contemporary manner? Uh, did they did they say that, uh, at the start of the brief, or it was uh later, so called you guys conceptualize it, said that the you know the the style should be more contemporary. Okay. So uh, Jackson, it was a it was a competition. It was a design competition. Mm. I, if I remember correctly, there were five, five firms which took part. Right. So we won the competition. So I, I imagine they liked our ideas, mm. uh, and our ideas when we presented during the competition were already contemporary. Mm. It was very much the same ideas that we finally executed the project. So I imagine they were they were definitely for the idea. The only thing is that along the way, because it needs to be consulted with the grassroots and the users and so on. There were, of course, lots and lots of questions because this is not something that people are used to. I would say it was probably the first contemporary mosque in Singapore. Of course, subsequent to that, there were many others.、Uh, but you know, the 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 people who ran the mosque project, they were very surprisingly very open, very open. So what they didn't understand,、uh, we had to do research to show them.、Uh, I think the the key here is to delve deeply behind the expression and not just show them the expression.、Uh, I see some of the new mosques doing that. It's just a contemporary expression, and I think that won't cut it because people need need to understand what what is behind it, and people emotionally connect with what's behind it.、Mm. Yeah. Okay. Don't mind me asking. I'm very curious to know as well. Like, ah,、uh, from your winning design at the at the competition to the final execution of the building, how much difference was there? Or it was very much quite the same actually. Ah,、uh, uh, in this usually for us, it's not a lot of difference. But I would say that in this project, ah,、uh, we did keep. A lot of the ideas. I mean, the the competition was based on the premise of the arabesque, which I, I tried to explain. It's actually quite a complex subject.、Uh, it was based on that,、uh, and that that we kept very much、uh, uh, in the in the in the project as well. But there were other things. For example, there was a change in in the usage, the number of classrooms, and all that. So obviously, the competition itself wouldn't the 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 scheme itself wouldn't apply. Yep, yep. But、Those、I think the ideas were there. Right, more of the functional things, lah. Right, it's more、yeah. functional thing. I think the main ideas were there.、Yeah. But you know, I mean, it, you need a client who is very open-minded, who's willing to 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 you know to to contemplate other approaches, lah. Okay. So the answer is that、uh, yes, they are they're very open-minded. Hmm. I see. Okay. Um. Next question is for Gen Hua. Um. 那这个问题是说，豪华朗基工其实创作了许多大型的项目。然后，请问哪一个项目让你留下最深刻的印象？然后，如果你有机会可以，呃，有一个梦想的梦的项目的时候，你的梦想是要完成什么？对，呃，我觉得应该是其中一个很喜欢的作品，其实是在刚刚那个一开始的影片里面最后的那一座山。那那座山其实会发生的原因，是因为当时我们被邀请去参与一个大地艺术季。那呃，我们并不是在擅长做大地艺术季的一个团队，但是在我们团队其实很希望在参与大地艺术季之前先找到关系。那所以我们其实做了非常非常多的设备之后，我们发现其实台中县政府有大一大批没有办法处理的呃，因为在一个台风之后
，然后因为要种植植物所产生的水泥的废弃物，那这水泥的废弃物它产生了之后，因为那个报道是写说，因为没有业者愿意回收，所以台中县政府变成是无法处理的一种现况。那我们就。就讨论完之后，就发现这个水泥其实是在台台湾的东部山区开采，所以其实台湾的山区因为水泥的开采，它变成是一种断头的状态。那这个水这个水泥柱里面其实有少量的钢筋，所以我们那时候讨论出的就是让这个水泥柱变成是一个一个的基座，然后再用这个钢筋，像是这个山脉的线条，去回应一个台湾因为人为过度开发，因为使用这些水泥所产生的。这个这种废弃物，然后再造成一件艺术作品的一个装置。那这件作品是因为它回应到这个环境的关系，然后也符合这大地书记的一个议题，所以这是我在这件作品里面非常印象深刻的一个部分。那呃，很希望做，我觉得可能是做我们自己的博物馆，因为我觉得其实我们的装置要被收藏很困难，那因为都太大了。可是这个作品它。花了那么多的精力，如果他只是为了一个短暂的一阵让它发生，其实对这些艺术工作者来说，其实是非常可惜的一件事情。我们会觉得，他并不是只是为了要服务在那个短短的时间，让大家觉得很开心的一种状态，而是他有某一种意义，它是存在的。所以，如果大家有机会，我们希望可以有一个地方、有个环境，可以让这些重要的作品可以聚集在一起，然后像是一个博物馆的状态。嗯，谢谢。那应该需要一些很大的那个也很大的户外空间，对，是、就、不是很有趣 ？OK， we're going to move to the next question.、Uh, it's quite a long one, but I'm going to try to summarize it.、Um, and I think it, it it's more for the Singaporean designers, Pan and Kok Yang, to to maybe can、uh, answer. It it says here that you know、um, you know the Taiwan has started you know rubbish separation since the、uh, you know two thousands and.、Um, And they have a lot of confidence store, but yet the wastage is very low.、Uh, and you know, we haven't really seen this kind of、uh, so-called recycling or low wastage movement in Singapore. So we want to ask, like, is there any suggestions for how we can so-called activate that in Singapore? Yeah, not not an easy question, but maybe I ask a pun and、uh, got him. <laughs> um. Frankly, I'm not even sure. Am I the correct person to answer this? I'm not the. I mean, I don't work for the environment agency and whatnot, so I will not know、uh, that much. But I, I do know one thing for sure: is、um, we are in year two thousand. We did not do all this yet, lah. So、mm. that's that's a fact, and rightfully from the question, that's a fact as well. However, with the Singapore Green Plan, with、uh, NEA pushing out、um, zero waste、uh, programs, we are trying our best here to to to. To to at least we have started. So what I would say is、um, like what I always、uh, talk about.、Um, it's never too late if you start doing. I mean, every step is still a step forward. Too small, then we are really still not fast enough. But I believe、uh, if we put our minds together, we will get there. And in the recent years, we see that there's really a, a accelerated、uh, so-called commitment、yep. for the green movement in Singapore. So yes,、uh, I I think the question is is valid that、uh, we we need to get better and we are trying our best here. And sorry, I'm not really subject matter expert in that area. I don't work for the agency. Yeah. 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 Kok Yang, any 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 views on on this? Well, I'm I'm even less of an expert than Han. <laughs> but、um, but I I would say that、um, you know the the HDB is probably the best place to start. Mm. And and because you know, eighty percent of Singaporeans live in HDB, and、yeah. most of the waste I can imagine would be you know huge amount of waste、uh, in terms of residential, right? So so and and I and I know for a fact that HDB has really started doing this. They started doing this in certain estates、uh, yeah. at, on a trial basis, on a trial run basis. And you know, the Singapore government is always very very careful about things. They they take things one step at a time, and when they do it, they want to make sure it works. So it's already started. I mean, you can see some. Some pilot projects to actually doing this, and I'm very hopeful that it will it will be you know it will multiply very once we get off the ground, be very fast.、Mm-hmm. You know, this、uh, rubbish separation and so on. Right,、sure. right.、Mm. Okay, I have one last question. Uh, 最后一个问题了 before we end 那个 session. Okay, 我就问我们的台湾的朋友们，呃，台湾的设计师们。Okay, 这个问题是有关呃数位的 AR 跟 VR. Okay, 这个问题是说。
，你觉得 AR、VR 如果是用在你们的 project 上面，你觉得有什么可行度吗 ？OK， 先可能先问那个自己。嗯，我不认为 VR 在我们现在的东西可行，因为主要还是 VR 的装置呃并不普及。那如果我们今天的设计目的是希望更多人知道的话，我觉得这是一个大的限制。但是呃 ，AR 在呃这个叫 Apple 现在里面的手机其实都已经有内建了，所以我们最简单的做法，当然就是把这些海费很实际的带给大家看，我们就不用透过这三百六十度的互动，而是直接把它放到大家眼前，你可以直接扫，你可以看到它的大小，你可以看到它其他的一些环境等等的，这个是做得到的。但呃，我并不会特别觉得说，在现在的技术限制下，呃，需要特别做这个尝试，只是它可以是一种选项。嗯嗯，耿、嗯、华呢？你觉得你你有用 AR VR 吗？之前在你的装置上面？呃，目前是没有。但是因为其实我们的每一件作品都还蛮需要人身临其境，因为嗯，那些作品其实它的实际的感受，我刚才说，比如说我们在现场感受到风这件事情，如果我们今天要透过 AR 或 VR 的一个装置来做，其实它还要处理整个周围的那个 installation 的问题，所以我觉得这个可能是比较复杂的一件事情，所以。这个环境，自然环境本来已经可以提供这样子的一个可能性，我们可能在那个时候没有考虑到这件事情。但当然，如果在这两种选项，它可以是比较，如果有一些人是没有办法到现场来参观的话，或是说，呃，当这件作品它已经已经关机了，那也许就可以透过这样的技术，可以让不同国家或是不同环境的人可以看到这个。嗯 ，OK， 呃、uh...。Thank you very much.、Uh, thanks to all the speakers、uh, for sharing,、uh, wonderful sharing, and also for the audience for the really great questions.、Uh, I think we're running short of time. I think I would like to end the session and hand it over back to Trina. Thank you. Thank you so much once again, Pan, Kok Hyang, Zhiqi, Genghua, and Jackson for sharing your experience with our audience. To our guests, thank you for joining us today, and we'll appreciate if you could complete a simple survey for this webinar, which will also help us to improve on our future programs. A link to this form is also being shared right now in the Zoom chat. And if you'd like to find out more about the various upcoming programs at the National Design Center, do scan the QR code that you see on the right. We most definitely hope to see you at our future events. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>